A further application of elasticity of demand would be not just evaluating our elasticity function at a single price point or at two price points, but instead finding the complete intervals where demand is elastic, where it's inelastic, and where we would have unit demand. So in example five, we're given a price demand function. We want to express that as a function or express demand as X as a function of P. So the first thing to do is take that price demand function and solve it for X. This would give us X equals 8,000 minus 100 P. And we're also asked to express the revenue as a function of price. So keeping in mind that revenue is always price times demand or demand times price. Here we can substitute this function that we have for Xn and distributing that P through we'll get 8000 P minus 100 P squared. So we have our price demand function and our revenue function both has functions of P. In part B, we want to find the elasticity of demand function. So keep in mind this doesn't really have anything to do with the revenue function. This is only dependent on our price demand function. So using the same techniques we've used in the previous examples, we should be able to calculate a reduced elasticity of demand function as P over 80 minus P. And now we want to answer the question, or the questions, for which values of P, so at what price points, is demand elastic, inelastic, or unit? <clears throat> so keep in mind, elastic means that our value for E of P needs to be larger than 1. So we can ask Wolfram Alpha to take this price demand function and solve when is that price demand function greater than 1? In this case, we get a result of between 40 and 80. So demand will be elastic whenever price is between 40 and 80, so anywhere on the interval from 40 to 80. So that means if we're anywhere in that price range, we should decrease our price in order to increase revenue. <clears throat> so rather than evaluating at specific price points, that gives us an entire range of values to look at. Similarly, where should we where is demand inelastic? So that means that elasticity is between zero and one. So now we could update our expression to say solve 0 is less than our elasticity function is less than 1. So we're trying to find values of P so that our elasticity function will be bounded between 0 and 1. And in this case we get values between 0 and 40. So demand will be inelastic if our price is somewhere in the range from 0 to 40. And this would mean that if we increase price, we'll see an increase in revenue. And then we want to know, when is demand unit? So unit demand means our elasticity function is exactly equal to 1. So we can solve that elasticity function equal to 1 to get a price point of $40. So if we're asking for unit demand, we're asking when is the elasticity function equal to 1, and that is when P equals exactly $40. So that's that point where an increase in price results in exactly the same change in demand, or same percentage change in demand. So increasing or decreasing price won't affect our revenue. So now what we want to address is, for what values of P is our revenue increasing, and for what values is it decreasing? So revenue is increasing whenever demand is inelastic, because again, we have a situation where that increase in price 
yields a smaller decrease in demand. So revenue is increasing on the interval from 0 to 40 and decreasing on the interval from 40 to 80. Because when demand is elastic, increasing the price actually decreases our revenue because we see that larger decrease in demand. In example six, we're given a price demand function. We want to answer some similar questions. Where is demand elastic? Where is it inelastic? And where is demand unit? In this case, we already have our price demand function solved for x. So we should be able to find the elasticity of demand function to be 12p squared over 3,174 minus 6p squared. And then again, using the same process that we did in example 5, we would find that demand is elastic or greater than 1 on the interval from 23 over root 3 to 23. And demand is inelastic or less or between 0 and 1 on the interval, interval from 0 to 23 over root 3. Setting our elasticity function equal to 1 tells us that the demand would be unit at p equals 23 over root 3. Which you can notice, just like in the example before, is exactly that point where these two intervals almost intersect with each other. So one of the real applications of this idea, determining when price is elastic, inelastic, or unit, is in finding the optimal price point for a product. So here we're given a price demand function for selling french fries at a fast food restaurant, and we want to know what price will maximize the revenue from selling fries. So the first thing we need is this revenue or this price demand function to be written in terms of p. So we need to solve that for x, which would give us 900 minus 1000 p. From there, we can generate an elasticity of demand function. So to find the price point that will maximize our revenue means we want to take that elasticity of demand function and set it equal to 1 because that's, again, where we have unit demand meaning whether we increase price, decrease price, demand will change by the same amount, so that won't affect our revenue. So taking that demand function, setting it equal to 1, should yield a price point of 45 cents, or 0 0.45. So the price that will maximize revenue from selling fries is in this case 45 cents, because that's the point the price point where we hit that unit demand.